Good morning, welcome to Morning Prayer from St Luke's Prestonville Vicarage. Once again, Facebook is playing up for some reason. Um, so I'll get on with it, get on with prayer anyway. So we're, I am, COVID day two, don't feel too bad. It feels like I've got a bit of a cold, that's all. So hopefully that will stay the case. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all, to you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image and in these last days, you have spoken to us in your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. As the night has passed and the day lies open before us, let us pray with one heart and mind a few moments of quiet for our own prayers. So as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Uh, the psalm for today is a section of Psalm 119, verses 57 to 80, and they have this refrain. <clears throat> I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart, be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet back to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all those who fear you, those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your faithful love. Instruct me in your statutes. You have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word, O Lord. O teach me true understanding and knowledge, for I have trusted in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are gracious and do good, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart has become gross with fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than a hoard of gold and silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right and that in very faithfulness you caused me to be troubled. Let your faithful love be my comfort, according to your promise to your servant. Let your tender mercies come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be put to shame, for they wrong me with lies, but I will meditate on your commandments. Let those who fear you turn to me, even those who know your testimonies. Let my heart be sound in your statutes that I may not be put to shame. That refrain once more, I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right. So we pray. God, our comforter, send your Holy Spirit to reveal your hidden mercy, even in our failures and troubles. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from Genesis chapter 25, verses 7 to 11 and 19 to the end. This is the length of Abraham's 175 years. Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite, east of Mamre, the field that Abraham purchased from the Hittites. There Abraham was born Sarah. After the death of Abraham, God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac settled at Beer Lahai Roy. 
These are the descendants of Isaac, of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padan Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. One shall be stronger than the other, the elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterwards his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. This is the end of the Old Testament reading. <coughs> Thomas Merton reflects on what it means to, uh, to be transparent to Christ. Union with Christ means unity in Christ, so that each one who is in Christ can say with Paul, it is now not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. It is the same Christ who lives in all. The individual has died with Christ to his old person, his exterior, his egotistical self, and risen in Christ. In any case, the death of the old person is not the destruction of personality, but the dissipation of an illusion and the discovery of the new person is the realisation of what was there all along, at least as a radical possibility, by reason of the fact that each person is in the image of God. Christ within me means less and less of the old me. we come to the New Testament reading which moves into the second letter of Timothy so 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 1 to 14 Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus to Timothy my beloved child grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. 
but I'm not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. This is the end of the New Testament reading. St John of the Cross compares us to a window through which the light of God is shining. If the window pane is clean of every stain, it is completely transparent. We do not see it at all. It is empty and nothing is seen but the light. Dear God, wipe me clean. Make me a glass that shines through for you. Make me empty of all that is vain and meaningless so that what people see when they look at me is you. I know that the more I disappear, the more you will appear. And the more I shine, the less it will be me who is shining, but rather your love living and shining in me. May that happen. Amen. So let's pray. <clears throat> We pray, Father God, that we may shine for you today, that our lives will be transparent to those around us and they will see you through us in everything that we do. I want to pray today for St Luke's Advice Service as we're moving offices from Exeter Street into the Bright Helm Centre. Pray for Grace as she manages that move and for um, all the volunteers who are helping shift furniture and all the rest of it. I pray that our new home will be a place of um, grace and peace and that through all the work of St Luke's Advice Service, your light might shine into people's lives. Last night we had a Prestonville Community Association meeting and we pray for our community and for all the different groups that um, are active here for um, Exeter Street Hall, for the Friends of Dyke Road Park, for the community garden, uh, for those who are seeking to uh, develop something around safer neighbourhoods and traffic calming. And we thank you for our councillors and pray for them, Leo, Leo, Cyril and Amy. Uh, bless them in their work and uh, we thank you for their dedicated service of the community. And we continue to pray for those who are sick at the moment, uh, not just because I feel a bit rough, but uh, just because that we, we want to remember them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passions of sinful humanity, Give your people grace so that to, so to love what you command and to desire what you promise that among the many changes of this world our hearts may surely there be fixed where the true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour taught us so we pray. Our Father in heaven Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>